Hi. In this video, I want to talk about image stretching, which is how we assign different colors to the different numerical values in a data file, in a raster file in GIS. And to do that, I'm going to use the uh, free and open source tool Optics, uh, which is a tool which is specialized uh, in processing remote sensing images. And it's, uh, it's really good at stretching. It's got very um, extensive functionality for doing that. But the basic functionality is available in almost every GIS tool. And the, the data that I've loaded here, this file, uh, this black and white file here, is basically a LiDAR elevation model. So uh, a laser scanner mounted to an airplane uh, used to scan the topography in, gr in great detail. And it's for an, a part of Glasgow sort of squeezed in between Clydebank over here and Beers Den over here. And as we see, we can't actually see much interesting. We just see white and we see uh, black. And the black areas is basically areas where there's no data. This type of data is, is quite expensive, so it's often only collected for regions of interest. So it's collected inside the white box and, and in the black area there's no data. And at the, the bottom uh, we can see a histogram for this, this data file. And what we can see, um, see there's a little peak here and a little and a big peak over it there. And a histogram on the x-axis we see the different numerical values in the data file. So 0, minus 2000, minus 4000. And then the, we have these bars and the height of them uh, represent how common those, those particular values are in the data file. So how many pixels with that particular range of values are there in the data file. And we can see there's, there's a small peak here with values of about 0 to a couple of hundreds. Um, and then there's this big peak here at about minus 9,000 or probably about and this is a very commonly used value in GIS m minus 9,999 so 9999 and it's commonly used as a no data so to indicate areas of no data and most of this image is no data so that's why this value is so abundant and we also have this, this, this grayscale box here and that's basically the different tonal uh, ranges of the image for display. And that's basically how it's assigned to the different data values. So all the areas over here are shown in, in white or very light gray. And all the values over here are shown in black and different gray scale uh, ranges in between. And we can also move this box so we can, can change it. So we can move it away from the no data and we can center the box on, on top of the data. And then suddenly we can actually see much more information in our file. And we can see some kind of shapes. You can probably see some valleys in here and over here and some, some topography there. Um, and the, so the first thing to do is probably just to, to make clear to the software that, that the minus 999 is not a valid value. So just click and just remove everything below minus 100. You wouldn't expect elevation values below that in Glasgow. And now we, we get a much nicer histogram. And if we stretch our box to fit this histogram, get a nice image. And what you can see is that, that most of the elevations in this area are somewhere between about zero to, well, a little bit over 150. And there's a few higher elevation points. Um, and so we can put decide to maybe change our box and just focus our uh, our display on the lower region so we can see a bit more detail in there and that's how we can change change the histogram and maybe just focus only on a smaller range and maybe if we're only interested in those values just display those and everything thing uh, darker than this value of about 75 meters is now black and everything uh, if a value higher than about 140 meters is now white. And uh, let's just set it back to the original full range of the data. So now, now we can really see every value in the data set. And there's a few more, more tricks in there. And usually you have different stretch types. Now it's a linear stretch, so, uh, which basically means that the color values from zero being black and uh, and, uh, and at the end, 100 being white, sort of stretched or linear, like a straight line. 
And we can change that stretch type uh, to more curved functions, which will more emphasize uh, certain the lighter parts of the data or logarithmic, just the opposite. And now the valleys stand out a bit better. Similarly, and then lastly, there's histogramic equalization because we can see that uh, if you look at our histogram, it's not uh, there's a there's clearly far more value sort of in this range and, and, and between here. So probably between about probably 75 to 150. That's where most of the data is, and there's a lot of. Uh, there are some range here, but there's there are very few value there. And histogram equalization kind of stretches the data in a strange way to uh, try and, and flatten the histogram so you you see most of the information in the file there. So so now if we if we use that stretch type, then we can actually see see much more. We suddenly see small little specks here, and if we to zoom in, we get a better ID. And we can actually see the different houses and buildings on this uh, on this lidar scan. And lastly, it's um, this 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 um, the tonal range of an image that isn't limited to grayscale. It's uh, possible to use use uh, different types. For example. Um, we can use uh, yeah here we can change the color map so for example we can change it to a uh, hot iron which stretches the data between uh, between uh, uh, dark red for low values and uh, bright yellow for the the highest values and of course if this could be very intuitive if you're talking about about the temperature scale if these were temperatures then this uh, would intuitively make a lot of sense to a lot of people. So, so for those kind of applications, this core skill would be very useful. And it really depends on the application, on, on what's intuitive. Um, so what other maps can we use here? Um, spectrum, so just going from, from all, through all the colors, the rainbow, from red to green to purple to, uh, to blue to purple. Um, Color up, and lastly, let's just choose auto colors because it shows use a whole use a whole range of colors, and then this can be useful to sort of uh, high emphasize certain data in it. It's not intuitive to interpret, but you can nicely see all the different contours on this. Let's set it back to grayscale. And the different color scales they can also be useful because it's easier for the human brain to see um, see differences between colors. Um, the human eye is very limited in the amount of, of shades of grays it can distinguish between. So sometimes switching to a color map can help you see data, uh, see more information in your uh, your data set than you could originally see 